guys, go to hardafseltzer.com. Get some 8% seltzer shipped right to your house. We got the peach, we got the watermelon, we got the pina colada and the blue raspberry. We are currently live in over 300 stores in Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, and the Outer Banks in North Carolina. And if you're heading out to the Major League ballparks this summer, make sure to check us out in the Miami Marlins Stadium, as well as Tropicana Field, home to the Tampa Bay Rays, as well as the Tampa Bay Rowdies. We are live inside all three stadiums. So if you're down in Florida this year, check us out. Go to hardafseltzer.com today and check your store locator or order them right to your house. Live from our studios in Austin, Texas, this is Drinkin' Bros Fake News with Ross Patterson, Dan Holloway, Papa G with the traffic, How do you feel? Not good. Yeah? Field reporter, Hot Bob. And Delco Dan with sports. Welcome to Fake News. Yeah, welcome to Drinking Bros Fake News, everybody. Bringing you the realest, fakest news of the week. Start with some real news, D'Anthony. I always get excited when people tag the location of where they're buying hard AF seltzer. I was a little more excited last night when somebody had tagged McFarlane's Spirits in Alpharetta, Georgia, which is right next to my house. Mm. Weird, man. You know, I used to go in there with fake ID as a kid and buy some stuff. And uh, and now it's our own booze. And now children are probably going in there with their own fake IDs and buying that. Yeah. And that brings a te- <clears throat> that brings tears of joy to my eyes. I, I mean, don't does. don't do that. No, don't do that for if sure. You're, uh, if for you're a sure. child. There it is. Let that camera hang on. Don't you. do that. Yeah, definitely don't do that. Because I wouldn't. Me neither. I wouldn't wink do it either. But uh, when I when I was and I was doing it, I enjoyed it. But uh, it's, still, it's still shocking to see. But I was like, oh, shit. Somebody just bought it right outside the store in my, my old house. Look oh. at that. That's fun. So thank you, everybody. Uh, we love seeing those photos and, uh, and tagging us in, in all the stores. Plus, we want to help the stores, man. We want to help people stay open and stay in business. A lot of these are like mom and pop places. And if we can help tag them on social media and get them out there, I have zero problem promoting the company. Thanks for uh, promoting us and supporting us. So, yeah, we're down, dude. Just tag the location. We'll, we'll, we'll give them a shout out on all the old social medias. Speaking of social media, D'Anthony, what you can't do, apparently, is uh, post a bunch of violent threats toward the president and say that you are polishing up your old scope, getting ready to take out uh, the old man in office here. A Utah man has been killed by the FBI for uh, doing such things. A Utah man was shot and killed during an FBI raid early Wednesday morning, the FBI confirmed to ABC News. The raid was in connection with an investigation into alleged threats against President Joe Biden and others, according to two officials briefed on the case. Now, one of the officials told ABC News uh, that the investigation began in April and the U.S. Secret Service was notified by the FBI in June. Seems like a long time uh, for something like that. In addition to the threatening posts, the officials said that the man under investigation suggested online he was making plans to take physical action. The threats had been deemed credible, the officials said, uh, and the FBI in Salt Lake City said the shooting occurred around 6.15 a.m. Local time there in, uh, in Utah, while special agents attempted to serve arrest and search warrants at a residency in Provo. Oh, shit. Provo. Mm. Big fan. Yeah. Big fan. I'm kidding. I'm not a big fan of Provo. It's uh, definitely in Utah. Now, their statement is the FBI takes all shooting incidents involving our agents or task force members seriously. Uh, In accordance with FBI policy, the shooting incident is under review 
by the FBI's uh, inspection division. As this is an ongoing matter, we have no further details to provide. Huge shock. Yeah, I mean, you, you would like to see some body cam footage of this one pretty soon. Yeah. Um, because, you know, the, the guy's 75 years old. I didn't know that. So it kind of feels like they just uh, kicked his door in and shot him, frankly, which is, you know. That, uh, you, that's him there on the screen? Yeah. I'm going to be honest, though. For 75, this looks like a Charlie Daniels drinking motherfucker who could probably still do some damage. Sure, yeah. I mean, being 75 is not going to stop you from pulling a trigger if you're a crazy person. Um, it's, a, it's, not a, it's certainly not a smart move to uh, make veiled threats against uh, politicians. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend or that. or anyone really. Like if you were just posting like, "Oh, I'm gonna fucking Elon Musk is coming to Texas. I'm getting my grenades ready or whatever the fuck." Like, yeah, you why, can't do that. Why would you even say something like that? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but this is all very fishy to me. Like typically, an investigation like this, you would call the guy first, call him on his phone, email him or something. Be like, "Hey, you're making threats, and we're gonna come out to interview you." Not only that, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but on social media, because we saw some of these posts uh, earlier, right before the show started. In some of these posts, typically, like Facebook takes these down. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe so Facebook may have taken them down and, and also reported them to law enforcement because okay. it's, it's a threat. Um, I don't know about that. I haven't seen any of his actual social media posts, although I have read uh, secondhand some of them about the getting his his M24 sniper rifle ready because Biden was coming to visit Utah this Wednesday. Um, <clears throat> that's just not a smart thing to do. No, it's not um, at all. And then, yeah, he, he, he said, I hear Biden is coming to Utah digging out my old ghillie suit and cleaning the dust off the M24 sniper rifle. Now, um, he was in the Air Force in mm. the 70s when there was no war on. Sure. So I don't know. I mean, that doesn't mean he can't shoot well. Mm -hmm. um, but the ghillie suit was purchased privately. It wasn't like he was issued something. This seems like an old man trying to act like a tough guy on the Internet, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but that again, that doesn't justify the FBI kicking a 75-year-old man's door and executing him, which sounds like what happened from what I'm hearing. Um, <clears throat> really? So it, it, it wasn't as if he was waiting when they came in and was just like, well, well maybe, he was, maybe he was, but Utah is a fucking stand your ground state, right? Like the cops don't have the authority to kick your door in and just come in guns blazing. You have a right to defend yourself. So there was no knock on the door. I don't, I don't no, know anything okay, about gotcha, any gotcha. I'm sure they knocked. I'm sure they announced themselves. Okay. But that doesn't like to a 75 year old man. Maybe he heard him. Maybe he didn't. Right. Uh, who knows what happened? That's why you call first. Like he, do you think this guy's a flight risk? Was he going to go hide in the woods and wait for Biden for for a week? There is a sh there is a picture that he posted on social media of him in the woods. So who knows? Yeah, he's standing in the foreground with trees behind him, wearing a ghillie suit. That's retarded. Dan, I, look, I take every threat seriously. Well, you, I mean, Secret Service, they have to take every threat seriously. So what they did was, um, uh, to to call this a credible threat, the guy mentions a specific. Uh, outfit he was going to wear and a specific weapon he would use, and here he is with pictures of them both, right? So that, that, that would be enough to say, yeah, that's a credible threat. And you call him like, hey, why are you making threats about the president? And then he says whatever he says. He goes, all right, well, we need to come to your fucking house to interview you in person to make sure you're not actually going to try to assassinate the United States president, mm -hmm. motherfucker. Uh, and then you go, you set up a meeting and go do that. But it doesn't, what, what they did was got to search warrant and tried to kick his door in so with this case in particular as far as what you said regarding releasing the the body cam footage what would be the harm in it uh because you already knew what happened online right yeah uh and then if <clears throat> if if they did kick down the door announce themselves and everything else and homeboy was just standing there aiming a gun at them then you could understand this and then you could kind of get rid of this story altogether and move on I don't know that the FBI does release body cam footage, do they? They, I mean, you could FOIA it, yeah. But uh, there, there's... It'll take a while. Uh, could. Yeah. Depends on the judge. Um, although the attorney general has been perfectly fine uh, standing in contempt of Congress. That's what I'm saying. Multiple times, so who knows. Yeah. Um, but either way, it doesn't... No matter what happened there, one, I... My, just basic human intelligence and somebody that's been in dozens of gunfights tells me that he wasn't just sitting there waiting 
to shoot people because he would have shot somebody. Like the, Especially at 6.15 in the morning. Yeah, it's, it's FBI. It wasn't a fucking like SWAT team or anything. It was just FBI agents, field agents. And, and let, I'm going to be really fucking clear about this. They're, they're good at financial crime investigation. They're good at like RICO style stuff. But that's it. They suck at everything else. They're definitely not gunfighters, for Christ's sake. They're fucking administrators. Uh, they're not. They're like LAPD guys are better shooters than these guys are. Okay. Um, so it isn't like they sent, uh, you know, their fucking SWAT to. At least from what I've understood, it's just FBI agents serving a search warrant here. So, um, <clears throat> the, I, I don't immediately dismiss the idea that he could have been lying in wait, waiting for somebody to pop through so he could take a shot at him, or that he was in. It's six o'clock in the morning. He's probably in bed. Mm -hmm. Right, and there's a gun next to the bed and somebody breaks into your fucking house and there's a lot of confusion and commotion and noise and you reach for the weapon and then you get shot to death by federal agents who just kicked your front fucking door and that's what probably happened um so it begs the question and, and and to your point about why they wouldn't release the body cam footage is because no matter what the circumstances were uh storming into an old man's house and executing him is bad optics mm -hmm. right uh, I, I'm, I'm surprised the story leaked well it's they they killed somebody and the FBI CSI team is out in front of the house. So it's mm. hard not to leak that in Provo, Utah. It's not exactly the most exciting place. I've, um, I've had fun there every time yeah. I've gone. Um, but it, you do have to wonder which one of these is going to be the rights version of George Floyd, right? Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's interesting you say that. I was uh, looking on social media last night on Twitter and a lot of people were comparing uh, Kathy Griffin and some other celebrities, uh, Snoop Dogg, um, and those guys to saying they wanted to kill Donald Trump. Or Madonna. Exactly. Um, and they were saying, why aren't those threats as credible as some old man in fucking Provo, Utah? Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, Madonna's not wearing a ghillie suit out in the woods. It, it's Brandenburg v. Ohio mm -hmm. uh, uh, is, is one of the primary. I've mentioned this many times before, yep. but it's one of the primary cases in incitement to violence or threats. Like, uh, California does has actually... Uh, probably one of the better laws about this, though they don't enforce any laws out there. But the law that's on the books, if you make a threat, to be charged criminally with making a threat, it has to be something that you could actually do, right? So if, if you and I are face-to-face -face in California and we're arguing and I say, and I have a, uh, like a fucking uh, metal pipe in my hand, and I say, I'm going to fucking smash you over the head with this metal pipe, that I've just committed assault, right, mm -hmm. by doing that. Or... Different states have different ways of detailing that. It would be a terroristic threat or whatever the fuck, right? <clears throat> but if I say, I'm going to drop a fucking nuke on your house, that's not a crime because I don't have access to nuclear weapons. You see the difference there? I would believe you, though. Like, if you said that to me, I would be like, eh, maybe he's got one. No, I don't. No one, no one does. Um, so it has to be something specific. It has to be something like... Uh, the president's coming to town. I'm going to put on this costume that I own and this employ this weapons platform that I also own. Now you've committed. Well, I, maybe it's a crime and maybe it's not. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's certainly going to have end up with somebody showing up at your fucking door. Yeah, it's a it's a very odd story. And it just kind of popped up out of nowhere. And uh, yeah. and then now you have this guy. What's his name? Craig Robertson. Craig Robertson. Yeah, I wonder. I, it's so when I say I wonder which one of these is going to be the uh, uh, the conservative George Floyd, it's like people that are people that are doing stuff that they're definitely not supposed to be doing, but probably didn't need to get executed by agents of the state, like Ashley Babbitt, for example, didn't need to get just smoked by some dude. Mm -hmm. um, you know, her name popped up by the way last night too, yeah. as this was trending, and this was in regards to the Trump. January 6th charges that he mm -hmm. just got where uh, he said, look, they're going to be able to, to pull discovery on all of those people there. Um, I don't know if you saw that story with the look like a chief of police there who was who was there who just dropped the post about, hey, man, half the fucking people on this thing were feds. Mm -hmm. um, and he just came out and said it. I guess he had made a statement. It didn't get out to the public or whatever. And he just went on Twitter, I think, last night or the night before and just aired out everything and just said, fuck you guys, man. Like, here's what really happened in this. And, uh, and everybody's asking, well, if this guy knew what he knew, then you could get the discovery for the Ashley Babbitt shit and everything else and, and figure out who was actually in this building, why, and then who was pushing these people into the fucking building. Yeah. Uh, besides, you know, some of the older ones. But this story is certainly 
bizarre. And I feel like five or six of these pop up a year where you're like, what the fuck is actually going on here? And I don't know that we'll ever get the answer to it. Yeah. It's weird. It is. It's in, uh, you know, um, it, it does seem to be kind of, uh, like I, I th- this is one that I wouldn't have been shocked by if it happened 15 years ago. If you heard a story about mm-hmm. some old dude in Utah who was threatening the president and then FBI showed up at his house and smoked him, uh, that wouldn't be, it would be of interest. I don't know that it would be alarming politically though. Right. right? Cause it's, there's a bunch of crazy people. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but now it is alarming politically that stuff like this is happening. It's like Waco. Sure. Know? Which Waco was, was a good time, it looked like. Yeah, R- Waco. I mean, right and, up until the end. Waco and Ruby Ridge, it's like, <laughs> you know, um, the the state can never have a monopoly on violence. Like, you, you have the intrinsic right to defend yourself against anybody, including the government, mm-hmm. including agents of the government. That's what the entire goddamn Constitution is about, particularly the Second Amendment, right? Uh, but not just the Constitution, but also the Declaration of Independence. The second part of the Declaration of Independence specifically states that human beings, citizens, have not just the right, but the responsibility to throw off an oppressive government once it, it stops functioning in the way that it's supposed to. That is a that is a, a, a duty of yours to do that. So, you know, obviously the government that's in charge, we, we think of the government or the state as uh, almost the facilitator of these things, but it's not what it is. They're employees of ours, Mm -hmm. and we've allowed them to become the facilitators of things and amass enormous wealth and power. And at some point, we're going to have to fight them. That's just the way it is, right? It's the way, and and it isn't just about America. That's the way every fucking goddamn government in the history of human beings has been. Yeah, uh, including what's going on in Ecuador right now, uh, which we'll get to that later. That was a fucking wild one last night. Uh, But next up, uh, Dr. Fauci referred for prosecution. This is uh, <laughs> this is an awesome one. I was not expecting it though, um, because we haven't heard or seen this fucking guy in how long now? It's been a minute. I mean, the last time I saw him was at a fucking dinner in uh, D.C. You're kidding? Yeah. How long ago? Um, fuck, I don't remember. Within a year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, when Biden got in there, he was there for a few months and everything, and then you were, you were coming out of the pandemic, and that fucking guy disappeared off the face of the planet. Yeah, he might be in WITSEC, to be honest. What's um, that? Witness protect. Wit- oh, really? Yeah. Um, uh, he, he's uh, somebody's going to get this guy for sure. It right? feels like it. Like he's in. I, I don't. I don't think that Biden is in any real danger, to be honest. He's an old man. Yeah. Uh, I, I think most people just think of him as a, as a goofy dum-dum at this point. I think Trump could be if he starts. Trump could be, yeah. Uh, Fau- Fauci steam. is in, in danger. I, I would say 24 because. 24 hours of every single day. I don't think it's just the right anymore. I think people from the left who have lost their businesses and all this other shit or people who have gotten COVID after getting the vaccination and the boosters and all that other bullshit are, are now really fucking angry too. So this could be coming from any side. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Senator Rand Paul out of Kentucky Uh, has referred Dr. Anthony Fauci to the Justice Department for investigation into possible criminal prosecution for allegedly lying under oath to Congress about his knowledge of gain-to-function research conducted at China's Wuhan uh, Wuhan virus lab. Bob, can you pull up this clip? Actually, this went viral on Twitter last night. uh, I'd watched the video from it. Uh, Is that all? Keep reading here. Because you can play it. The back and forth between Rand Paul and Fauci uh, during this was was pretty fucking intense. And, uh, yeah, go ahead and play oh, this yeah. it's now. A, it's seven minutes. Uh, yeah, find it. I don't want to listen to seven minutes of this shit. It's worth it. I mean, they, he really – I'll say this because I watched the full seven-minute seven clip last night. Rand Paul really knew his fucking shit, and I think this is what made it so powerful – is it wasn't like a Marjorie Taylor Greene or a Bobert or somebody like that. Like Rand Paul has clearly studied up on this virus uh, and and virology to mm. some extent that he knew his fucking shit. Um, how long is that that clip right there, Bob? I'm just scrubbing it to the point where they start talking to each other. Okay, uh, pl- play a little bit of it for the audience so you can understand. This isn't coming from a at least in t- the way it felt for me. This isn't coming from a place of. 
I'm from the right. I need to get Fauci. It, it, he was genuinely pissed off about the way this was treated and specifically where it came from and why. Go ahead and play it. Can you imagine if a SARS virus that's been juiced up and had viral proteins added to it to the spike protein, if that were released accidentally? Dr. Fauci, do you still support funding of the NIH funding of the lab in Wuhan? Senator Paul, with all due respect, you are entire, entirely and completely incorrect that the NIH has not ever and does not now fund gain of function research in the Wuhan Institute. Do they fund of Dr. Barrick? We do not fund. Do you fund gain, Dr. Barrick's gain of function research? D Dr. Barrett does not do gain of function research, and if it is, it's according to the guidelines, and it is being conducted in North Carolina. Not you don't think inserting in a bat virus spike protein that he got from the Wuhan Institute into the SARS virus is gain of function? That is you would not be in the minority because at least 200 scientists have signed a statement from the Cambridge Working yeah. Group saying that it is gain of function. Well, it is not. And if you look at the grant and you look at the uh, progress reports, it is not gain of function, despite the fact that people tweet that. So they do you still support it? sending money to the Wuhan Virology Institute? We do not send money now to the to Wuhan uh, Virology Institute. Do you support Institute? sending money? We did, under your tutelage. We were sending it through EcoHealth. It was a sub-agency right. and a sub-grant. Do you support that the money from NIH that was going to the Wuhan Institute? Let me explain to you why that was done. <laughs> the <laughs> SARS-CoV-1 I originated did not have in sex banks in China. With that woman. It would have been irresponsible <clears throat> of us if we did not investigate the bat viruses and the serology to see who might have been <clears throat> or, infected. Or perhaps it would be irresponsible China. to send it to the Chinese government that we may not be able to trust with this uh, knowledge and with this uh, incredibly dangerous viruses. Government scientists. You can, you like can yourself press pause there. That, that's good enough. Yeah, um, so uh, uh, gain of function research was absolutely funded uh, by the organization, by the federal government. Um, there is a uh, there's a paper called "Discovery of a Rich Gene Pool of Bat SARS Related Coronaviruses." Um, provides new insights into origin of SARS coronavirus. Um, it describes in depth the research carried out at the Wuhan Institute of Virology and shows the paper trail where it was directly funded by the NIA, um, or uh, uh, NIH rather. Um, the paper's author is a, a Chinese fellow, Xi Zing Zingli, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, details the research in which the spike genes from two uncharacterized bat SARS COVID or SARS related coronavirus strains were in the Wuhan Institute of Virology combined with genomic backbone of another SARS-related coronavirus to create a novel chimeric SARS-related uh, virus that showed uh, cytopathic effects in primate um, epithelial cells and replication in human epithelial cells. And this, what, so what he's saying is they took two different coronaviruses, SARS-related coronaviruses, combined them, and that mm -hmm. is what we know as COVID-19. They made it in a fucking lab. Right. That's, that, that, and that not, not only did it happen, but they fucking, not, not only was gain of function happening, I, I mean, uh, they specifically created the COVID-19 virus in a lab. Now, you can say they did it on purpose or, or released it on purpose or accident. I don't know if I believe it's on accident anymore. To be honest, it seems like it was intentionally released. Um, but <clears throat> there is a very conclusive paper trail showing that the NIH funded that gain-of-function research and showing that COVID-19 specifically was created in that fucking lab and then released on, into the world either by accident or on purpose. There's no question about that. Yeah, and, and when I watched this uh, video here that we just played, um, having been in quite a few lawsuits and done quite a few depositions, I understand his line of questioning and I understand Dr. Fauci's answers. Now, Rand Paul knows that he's fucking lying, mm -hmm. but he also knows the only thing that he can get him on um, what appears to be this loophole of gain of function specifically. 
I guess it was legal to fund these fucking labs, which he said it shouldn't be, and I fucking agree with that. I don't know why we're funding labs in China anyways, but through this agency that, that you were talking about, there was a loophole where you can't fund game, game of function. No, so, it's not a loophole. It's a federal law. Right, but this is what they're trying to get him on right now, uh, and this is the evidence that they're trying to go back and saying, no, you were definitely funding gain of function research versus just funding this lab. Mm -hmm. I don't think either should be legal, but that specifically is what they're trying to get him on. And of course they were fucking doing Well, now it. they're going to get him for perjury. Right. And that's right. that's what this is. So yes. the, the, the information that uh, Fauci omitted from his testimony or obfuscated from his testimony would fall under a criminal statute that, that says, quote, um, whoever makes any materially false, fictitious, or fraudulent statement or representation as, as part of any investigation or review conducted pursuant to the authority of any committee, subcommittee, commission, or office of Congress consistent with the applicable rules of the House or Senate is subject to criminal fines and imprisonment of up to five years, which would essentially be a death sentence for this guy, mm -hmm. which is what he deserves. He doesn't deserve to live anymore. You, you, like, certainly COVID was quite a bit less dangerous than the media or the government purported it to be. I think we, most people, I think most everyone agrees on that now. Even the New York Times ran a story about how the COVID death no numbers were inflated two weeks ago. <clears throat> but a lot of people did die because of it, old people mostly, right? And, and they wiped out tens of thousands of elderly people with this. And he's primarily responsible for it. Well, if you look at the, the world as a whole, he wiped out, what, 8 million people? Uh, no, I mean, it wasn't that many. Are you sure? Yeah. What was the COVID death? I remember watching that running ticker on. That, that's that's the amount of people who died Fox. with COVID. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. So. So it's probably like maybe a third of that. Well, but well, that's still a lot of people. But yeah. let's see, let's use me as an example. I had pneumonia for three or four weeks heading into you know trying to ride it out until Thanksgiving because I'd had it before in the past and everything else. Then I got COVID on top of it uh, in there and I almost died from it. Simple pneumonia wouldn't have killed me on its own. That combination is what fucking nuked me, and I almost fucking died. Mm. So I'm goddamn coming for 11 days, so I'm pissed off about it. Um, we shouldn't have been doing any of this across the board. Funding China, funding this lab, is in, in particular, this gain-of-function bullshit, like combining it. Uh, yes, this guy should go to fucking prison forever. Will it happen? Absolutely not. I think he's probably in a goddamn... Uh, trailer park or motor home, the same as Ray Epps is right no, now. No, he is in Martha's Vineyard on a secure compound somewhere. Is he really? I promise you. I don't know if that there specifically, but somewhere like that, yeah. He's so, rich. He, no, he, I, and I he know made, that. He, yeah. He's made $8 he's, million dollars in the last three years. Oh, uh, he's very, very rich. Along with all the other bullshit from the 80s and everything else he's done, he's extremely rich, so you're probably right on that. Um, just out of curiosity, uh, which is why I enjoy being in these rooms and going to dinners like the one you just discussed, what was the reaction from other people when he walked into the room? Uh, well, he's small, so he's very small. But did, did people look at him of like, "Holy shit, there's there's so and so," and they were amped about it, or did they look at him in disgust of like, "You fucking did this"? Uh, he so the the person that was putting on the event, um, it's a big State Department event, but the person who was putting on the event announced him there, and he got like a, a you know kind of i don't know a middling applause kind of i don't know it's like at a kid's fucking play recital, like a golf clap shit, yeah. okay <clears throat> but, but then, it wasn't like a rip roaring like holy shit no no then when and this is a this is a diverse crowd it's people from all over the political spectrum it's from 70 or so different countries i think we're oh gotcha well. gotcha okay um but when Glenn Youngkin walked in, he or yeah when Glenn Youngkin walked in and got introduced he got a thunderous round of applause yeah so you, you can usually judge at these events who's who and, and what uh, what everybody's kind of feeling about that person in the room. Um, even people who've done horrific shit. Uh, I, you know, I told that story about Johnny Cocker when he walked when he was walking out of that movie. There was two hundred people there, and uh, and everybody looked at him and was like, "God damn, that's Johnny Cochran, motherfucker!" Even though he had just gotten a murder off, there was still like this weird level of respect for Johnny Cochran. Whereas this guy. If you're saying it was just golf claps, I bet you half the room was super pissed off and the other half is like, do we clap for this guy? What do we do now? Because we all know too much now. And I don't feel like anybody's on his side right or left anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like that. 
because you don't see him out at the big events anymore with Biden and, and everybody else. He's just kind of disappeared. And well, I, I mean, he, he, he could do events with Trump, too. Let's let's not fucking memory hole the fact that Trump kept him in office. No, not at all. Not at all. Look, all of these motherfuckers could have fired him. He was there for, since what, Reagan? Uh, yes, 83. 81, I think, is when he Correct. joined the NIH. So every president since could have gotten rid of this guy, but they didn't. Yeah, I mean, you would think that um, the gay community specifically would have run this guy out of town a long right? time ago. Because yes. he's the one that started the very, very incorrect rumor that daily, ordinary daily household contact could, could lead to the transmission of HIV, mm-hmm. right? Ostracized families made gay people pariahs for fucking two decades. It made right? Magic Johnson stop playing basketball. Yeah. He had, a cu- he had a couple good years left. Shit. Well, Damn. he came back for a little bit. After. Did, and didn't he make the finals? I don't know. It was 94, I think. It was, I think it was against the Bulls. And uh, I, think they, I think they got swept that year. It, it is what it is. No, the Bulls so. didn't make the finals mm. that year. They, they made the second round of the playoffs. Was it 92? It might have been 92. I, I think the, didn't the Bulls get beat by the Magic that year? I'm not I, sure. I, believe. I think it was the Magic okay. that, that knocked them off. But uh, either way. They with faced this, off in 91 in the finals, the Lakers and Bulls. Yeah. yeah, and they got swept, right? That was 91, though. That's He, he was... Magic, that was pre-HIV. Yeah, Magic right. was there for that. So maybe he didn't take It was after that years. season All right, yeah. he retired. It was, yeah. Years. Yeah, it was in 92. So maybe Jordan gave him AIDS. <sighs> Jordan's above AIDS, dude. Magic's above AIDS. You know Magic's on a fucking diet? He's gained so much weight. Mm-hmm. On AIDS? Like, that, that's the craziest shit of all time. If you're rich, dude, you can do anything you want. Yeah, so I'm sure this little fuck is just sitting there... S- sipping a nice cab, looking at the waves roll in, you know? Uh, what a piece of shit human being. I hate this motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I don't hate, though, is Ghost Bed. The mattress is a Ghost Bed. And ghostbed.com forward slash stringer bros. If I'd had one of these in the hospital, shit, maybe I would have enjoyed it a little more. But I didn't. I've heard Ghost Beds uh, can they're not cure mm-hmm. AIDS, but certainly part of the treatment program. Yeah. Yeah, and I heard it doesn't hurt as much anymore, and then just makes life better. What AIDS? Yeah. The AIDS mm. of the bed. The, the bed helps the pain of the AIDS. Mm. I, I look, it's an amazing mattress. Okay, I'm not. I can't legally say that it's going to cure AIDS. It hasn't cured my sleep apnea, but I am more energetic in the office. Are you? I mean, have you not noticed? Uh, no, no, I haven't, Giorgio. It's always a mixture of what drug are you on, you know? Uh, and that's fine. I like that too. You and know, today I'm on Ghost Bed. I know you're high on ghost bed, brother. And you can be too. 50% off the bundle package right now. It's the adjustable base and the mattress combined together. Split King, most popular version. Uh, so if your partner does have HIV and then you kind of want to stay away from them, that Split King is probably your best. I option. do actually have my adjustable base <laughs> is a Split King. Is it really? But I just have one king size mattress. So if you do it that way, you can just put a. Uh, um, there's an Ethernet cable that goes from one to the other. That's so what I, one yeah, remote what I got, yeah. works. Yeah, yeah. but I, <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe I'll get two two smaller beds at some point. It depends if you start dating somebody with AIDS. You know, uh, no, that'll just. I want to be on the same level. Okay, just so I can keep an eye on them. Yeah, because they'll sure. try to bleed into your mouth at night. That's oh, how boy. fucking Carton and gave Kyle AIDS. Yeah, and that's uh, that's how cats kill babies, dude. Sucking the breath out of their that's mouths when real. they sleep at night. That's real. All why why would real. that work? Explain to me exactly how doing reverse CPR at a fuck a cat doing reverse CPR on a baby is going to kill it. There's lung make any capacity. The cat's lung capacity will just suck out all the baby breath. That is they have the nothing inside of them. Dumbest shit I've ever heard. Oh, the baby's breast smells like milk. It's breast milk. You think cats like breast milk? They sure do. No. Yeah. It's salty Who and fucking like warm. Bre- I like no. I like breast milk. It's no, great. It's gross. Uh, I've got several jars left in my house. I'm not even going to drink them. Thousands of babies are dead across America every year from cats sucking the breath right out that's of not mouth. ever happened once sure it no. sure has it sure has, not one dude. time that's fucking dumb I, they're studying it over in uh, wuhan right now uh, they got a bunch of weird siamese cats that are sucking up babies kids babies uh babies lives it's so fucking dumb because that's gonna be like what the fuck bro um 40 off you just want the mattress or the pillows the sheets or whatever man I, they have an RV mattress. Could that be for your dog or cat if you just want to chuck it on the floor? Why not? All right? I wouldn't recommend getting a cat if you have kids, obviously. Uh, I do, and I don't have any cats. I also don't suck my own dick at night, so I don't have cats. But if you do and you want them to sleep in comfort, get them an RV mattress. Throw it on the floor next to your regular one. Have fun. You're also getting two free luxury pillows with a mattress right now. When you check out, you're going to see a three-year pay-as-you-go program. 
No interest as long as you have decent credit over there. Stretch these payments out for, for three years and all the deals are good with that. So fuck it. Load up. Get a new mattress and a bedroom set today at GhostBed.com forward slash drinking bros. Next up, we got the old Coast Guard, Anthony. Yep, former leader of the Coast Guard covered up an explosive investigation four years ago into rapes and sexual assaults at the agency's academy, despite prior plans by top officials to come clean about the inquiry. Commander Carl L. Schultz yeah. took charge of the agency in June of 2018 as the secret investigation dubbed Operation Fouled Anchor. Oh, God. Why? I don't know. It's So the rule on naming military operations, now this is an investigation, so whatever, but the rule on naming military operations generally is, would you be okay uh, telling your subordinates' families that they died in that operation? No. Like, would it sound noble? No. Uh, operation Enduring Freedom. That sounds like something, even though it was bullshit. Mm -hmm. It sounds like something. Sounds like nice. That. Yeah. Operation Foul to Anchor. What the fuck kind of stupid shit is Bro, that? Bro, um, that stinks. <clears throat> anyway, so this guy came into command as the investigation was concluding. So he wasn't um, a part of the command structure that allowed for this dark history of sexual misconduct that happened in, in the, the investigation tracks dozens of rapes and assaults from the late 80s all the way up until 2006, right? So it was long before his time in command. For some reason, decided to fucking try to scuttle the entire investigation. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, that, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I, people will protect the institution, but if it's stuff that happened fucking two decades ago almost, mm -hmm. um, you're like, yeah, that was fucked up, and here's how we're dealing with it. That's leadership, not just fucking pretending it never happened. It's weird, man. Uh, I don't understand why the guy did it, to be honest. I don't either. Uh, also, fouled anchor is, is anal. Like, that's a that's a slang term for anal, you know? You got that old dookie dick on you. So, I don't know. I Look, I don't know what was happening there, but maybe that's why they named it that. Duke dick. That's what I would have named it. Operation Duke dick? Yeah. How's so your, how's your foul, Sunday? Foul is a nautical term meaning to entangle or entwine. No, I, I know what it means, but it's just... Just hearing it out loud. Hey, Bob, uh, sorry. We uh, hate to inform you. Your son has passed away. Oh, my gosh. What happened? He died in Operation Fouled Anchor. Uh, you know, I guess if my kid was, like, riddled with bullets as, like, uh, I don't know, Chinese soldiers land on Taiwan or something like that in yeah. 15 years, and they were, I, I really wouldn't care what it was named. They were like, yeah, he was uh, stabbed to death by a group of Chinese soldiers who, who'd captured him, and they just cut off body parts, and, but the good news is he died in Operation Freedom Shield. Like, well, I don't give it, like... No, yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm with Dan on this. I think the name matters, dude. It does. You're, you're wrong about that. All I right. Promise you. Yeah. I, I think as a parent, I would want to hear something crazy, like... Yeah, he died in fucking Operation Kamikaze Bravo Dark Bear, where you're like, oh, shit, what was he doing, dude? How crazy was this mission? Instead, you get fouled anchor. Ugh, gross. That's just fucking gross. Uh, so with this, obviously, everybody who is uh, in the military always you know, talks about how the Coast Guard is, is the most important branch, right? Nope. You sure? No. I've heard that from everybody in the Coast no, Guard. No, no one's ever said that. Well, in the Coast Guard, everybody said that. So. No one even in the Coast Guard thinks that. <laughs> uh, but secondly, here with this, I don't, I don't, I, I guess I've never viewed the Coast Guard as doing something this dark. Like, what the fuck, bro? Uh, that's crazy to me. Yeah, I mean, well, I, it, it's, you've seen Buffalo Soldiers, right? Yes. That Joaquin yeah, Phoenix yeah, yeah, movie? yeah. yeah. The military, when there's no war going on, it's fucked, man. It's because like, you're just bored. Yeah, bored and people like you're training for a war that's never going to happen. That's what it feels like in your head. Mm -hmm. so you're always looking for opportunity. You're, you're still it's still the same crazy psychos, but they don't have an outlet to go do crazy psycho shit. So oh, they just shit. do it to each other, basically. Jesus yeah. Christ! That's why it's not a good idea to have a standing army, in my opinion. But Yeesh. anyways, internal records and reviews show that. Everybody involved in the investigation, including his second command had already made detailed plans on how to release this information mm -hmm. and and both to Congress and to the public and stuff like that. And for some reason, um, he decided it was it was a couple years ago when um, there was some bullshit about minorities being mistreated at the Coast Guard Academy or some shit like that. So he didn't want to double down 
and make it seem like the organization was completely fucked. I mean, I guess to some degree that makes sense, but you can't just cover up like systemic rape and sexual assault and shit like that. Yeah. What the f- I don't know why you, and, and this is October, 2018. It's peak me too. Like mm-hmm. you, what the fuck were you thinking, dude? It's just yeah. dumb. Yeah. That's uh... like, he's not personally responsible for any of this stuff. It happened way before he was a commander. It's like you come in and your first job is to, to, to make things better, not to fucking hide how bad they were. Although if you're a fucking announcer for the Baltimore Orioles, you know, what, what happened there? Was that the guy who dropped the N-word? No. Because he got fired. What? No, I was watching that whole video literally waiting for like an N-word or something. Something. And then I got to the end and I was like, wait, what? They, they suspended him indefinitely, at the time indefinitely, uh, because he was reading literal factual statistics about how the Orioles had played badly on the road at, at Tampa Bay for the last couple of years. How they were like 1-17 in 17 against the Rays in the last four years in Tampa Bay. Okay. And so what, what do they suspend him for? Being a negative Nancy. Shut up. Yeah, but what he, he, he wasn't even being negative, though. No. What, what he was saying was, it's been a long time since Baltimore was competitive, and especially at Tampa Bay. We haven't won a game at Tampa Bay since 2017. Yeah. Right? That's, that's a fucking six years. It's a, long a, time. it's a while. And then it's like, well, we've just won a game. Yeah, we've just won a game. We're going to win this series now. He was talking about how much better – the team is now and how much how good the organization has imp- how much they've improved and they're like nah don't bring up old shit <laughs> they're out and they suspended him indefinitely yeah and the only reason the only reason he's coming back on friday is because someone from the front office leaked it okay uh by the way the orioles lost 110 games two years ago yeah it's it's not like, like they were bob you're uh suspended indefinitely yeah, exactly <laughs> just go ahead and put the microphone down and walk away um, but with that, too, uh, the, the guy who said the N-word, he got fired, right? He's out of there? Yeah, he's done. He's done. And then uh, two nights ago, there was a, a TV show, Big Brother, that Christmas Abbott was on. Homeboy dropped the N-word on air, and they threw him out of the house, obviously. Um, it was like a Morgan Wallen sitch where he was kind of making fun of his black buddy, I mm-hmm. guess. But either way, do you not know that you can say that on fucking national television? Like, that's crazy. I mean, uh, Nate Diaz does. But is he black? No. No, he's like, Mohican. even a little bit? He, he's some kind of Latinx. I don't know. I always figured he's got a little something <clears throat> in there. But, you know, Central Coast and L.A. Mohicans use the N-word all the time. Really? That's pretty common. Okay. Yeah. You, you didn't notice that I when didn't you were know. living in L.A.? No. No, that, I never, nobody ever dropped an N-word. Like Cholos call each, call each other. They call each other. Well, not, not people that cut the grass. Mm-hmm. Those are like normal human being Mexicans okay. that are just living their lives. Yeah, I'm talking about like dumbass cholos. Oh no, I never spent a lot of time in East LA. Uh, mm. Contrary to popular belief, I know when you see me, you're like, "Oh shit, where'd you leave at homes down there?" And I was no, I wasn't. I wasn't an extra in training day or anything like that. So, all good on that. Uh, next up, sponsor wise, we got firstform.com/slash drinking bros micro factors. Boom. Right on my desk here. Easy little pouch, dude. Pop them out. Look at this. All the vitamins are in one fucking bag. Pop them in your mouth. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to have 50 jars on the counter in your kitchen or your medicine cabinet trying to remember how to take all your vitamins. I always forget um, just because it's boring. Let's face it. It's not, I'm not trying to make taking vitamins sexy at all. I'm just trying to make it easier for you. Uh, these guys are the best in the biz. So this one comes with uh, CoQ10s. Uh, the EFAs, probiotics, fruits and veggies, multivitamins, antioxidants, all the fun shit that you need that's too boring for you, that you don't want to go out to GNC and fucking buy all the time. GNC sucks anyways. Uh, go to firstform.com slash drinking bros today. Hop on these micro factors. Huge fan of these. Uh, I know a bunch of listeners have been posting about it, and they were like, hey, dude, you're right. And I was like, yeah, I, I'm not going to say something that sucks. Yeah. You know what GNC stands for? Uh, no. I, I was about to say something horrific, but... Gay N-word cunt. That's exactly where I was going, yeah, actually. That's what it stands for. Well, wow, okay. And like, I don't even know why anybody would shop there. Me neither. Because, you know, those are all offensive terms. They sure are. And we don't do that here no. on this show. Okay. Uh, while you're over on firstform.com slash drinking bros, try their fucking energy drinks, dude. Those are the best... Every time we order them, they're in and out of the office. Everybody drinks them. The green one. I don't know what the, the green one's name is. I just go by colors on cans these days. 
because uh, I think they have a blue Raz, uh, the same as we have for like Hard AF, and like, dude, they're all awesome across the board. I kind of feel like right now you are uh, you're tr- treading on the culture of black people. How so? Uh, by calling a flavor just the color that it is. Oh, really? I think they maybe. Own, I think they own that too. Well, there's another company that's doing it right now with a popular black rapper. I will not say who that is, but they definitely picked a flavor. Yeah, no, it was grape. Yeah, I know, but it's like there, there's a well, orange and grape. Yeah, I guess technically uh, England used to do it as well. They had a there's a product in England. It was our version of Fanta. Yeah, and it it was called orange drink. Yeah, there you it's go. like all right, socialist. Cunts. Ah, it makes sense. No, though. it doesn't make sense. It does to me. Uh, check out the protein sticks. The the breakfast sausages are my favorites. Uh, best in the biz. Look, they're a massive company. Um, Andy Frisella and those guys, like uh, they're mm-hmm. all incredible. This is the best. We're lucky to have them on the show. I'll be there next week. Oh, were you really? Are yeah. you doing a show with those guys? Yeah, Jared and I are going next Friday. We'll be on. Uh on uh, Real AF. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. That's dope. Tell, remind everybody when that's going to air, okay? When you guys yeah, come back. Yeah, it'll air Saturday, next Saturday, I think. But yeah, I'll let you know. Awesome. Big fan of those guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what you're going to get is uh, you're going to get free shipping uh, on orders over $75 over there. They got great apparel, uh, workout programs, you name it. These are the, the go-to guys in the biz, dude. Firstform.com slash drinking bros. Free shipping on orders over $75. Dollars. Next up, we got the Gabies. Gay babies. Mm. Gay babies here. Uh, a devout Catholic couple claims that Massachusetts uh, banned them from participating in state foster care system due to their religious beliefs. In a federal lawsuit filed Tuesday by religious liberty group Beckett Law, Mike and Kathleen, a.k.a. Kitty Burke. Ka- Catherine. Oh, is it Catherine? Yeah, it's right there in English. Uh, whatever, dude. Kathleen. Kitty, though, is where I was getting to. Mm-hmm. All right, why, why bury the lead? Let's just call her Kitty Burke. And the fact that they put this in the article is amazing. Because Kitty's in quotes. Somebody made it a point to announce themselves as Kitty. They sure did. Um, they sure did, and they, I like, like that. This is, my name's Mike, this is my wife, Kitty. Like, Kitty <laughs> is her name? Well, her real name's Catherine. Everybody calls her Kitty. Like, all right, fuck face. Yeah, we're not doing that, Kitty. Sorry. Uh, but they specifically claim the states restricted them from fostering children in the state due to their adherence to Catholic teachings on gender, sexuality, and marriage. Uh, after months of interviews and training and after years of heartbreak, we were on the verge of finally becoming parents, <laughs> the couple said in a statement. We were absolutely devastated to learn that Massachusetts uh, would rather children sleep in the hallways of hospitals then let us welcome children in, uh, in need into our home. Uh, the lawsuit also claims that the state listed only one reason for denying the Burke's foster application, which was they would be affirming would to not. A, uh, they would not be affirming to a child who identified as LGBTQIA. Yeah, so basically if the kid, Ma- Massachusetts is effectively using uh, de facto law. Again, another one of these things that was created at the uh, uh, bureaucratic level and not through a fucking vote, which is how laws work, by the way, um, to say that if you don't buy into gender ideology, you can't foster or adopt children. Mm-hmm. That's pretty fucked up. It is. Like, uh, I don't really care too much about the Catholic angle on this, although, you know... If you think that um, having m- making the kid uh, be bored on Sundays for an hour and a half and having little step figurines of Jesus playing soccer are going to damage the kid for life, uh, you know, there's probably worse things out there, like, you know, everything on YouTube, for example. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, so I don't really, I, I still don't even care about the Catholic part of it, but this is just the government once again trying to force people to think. A certain way and that is just about the most nefarious thing a government can do was uh was jesus ripping pks into the upper right corner you think uh when he was playing soccer in those figurines uh he bent it like beckham yeah that's where that's david picture. beckham got it from yeah, that's, that's why uh yeah i don't know beckham's got a really high voice i can't take him seriously mm. God, he's so good looking though uh, it's a weird voice to go with such a it good is, looking yeah. man i mean you, you can fix that i don't think you can oh no you can rfk it's a, it's jr a, can't fix it's this a, bullshit. it's a muscle well he's got a fucking congenital defect of some sort it's a muscle you you can train it you can train your voice to be deeper really yeah okay 
All right. Well, look, I'll take your word for it. I was born with this voice. What a gift, huh? What a gift to the world. Hey, Bob, let me ask you. Uh, obviously, you're a devout Catholic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You go every Sunday, I'd imagine. Uh, yeah, every yep. Sunday, every Mass at 6 a.m. most days. Uh, can you kind of refresh me here on the gay thing in Catholicism? What it, I, You can't be it, right? Because eh. didn't the Pope take it out? He had it in, and then he took it out. What's what's the what's the deep seated thing there for the the gay community? It's the well. Look, I guess it's the what the Pope says goes kind of. Um, right. He was cool with it for like six months. You can be gay, gay but then the people got too gay. Yeah, he was like, yeah. hey, God, come on, man. And then let, he said no. I let you motherfuckers throw a party at my house, <laughs> right? And you invited kids <laughs> to the party. What the fuck is wrong with you? Um, he. It's essentially like you can be gay. Gay people can go to heaven. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But maybe they shouldn't. They should try not to act on their Wrong. gayness. Wrong. Or be parents. Wrong. Really? You're not going to heaven. <laughs> the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if he said it, it's true. Listen, Jesus yeah. hung out with twelve dudes, and you didn't think they were uh, you know, one of the twelve, right? One of the twelve. Statistically, yes, but like we all know that all dogs go to heaven, right? Yeah, but these aren't dogs. These I are know, humans. But like, well, gay dogs don't know also that. go to heaven? Like, yeah, well, that just means if you are gay, you have to be a dog. How do you know that Jesus and the disciples mm-hmm. weren't dogs? Could, could and this whole story was about dogs this whole 12 time. 12 sweet-ass dogs, dude. Yeah. I picture my Jesus as a golden retriever. How sweet? I mean, he's just going through the desert with like a bunch of dogs on like a, a shit. On a camel. That'd yeah. be dope, dude. Even as a dog, you picture your Jesus blonde. I, I do. Every time. Golden retriever. That's the first thing I went to. Well, are there, I, White and blonde. Are there Arab dogs? Because the I, I, the only ones I ever saw were fucking mutts. They or, or sometimes rich people would have German shepherds or Malinois or something, but they got them from somewhere else. I'm assuming coyotes are there, right? Why would a coyote be in the Middle East? Chilling, vacation, Airbnb. You know, yeah, you don't, I don't. I, yeah, I don't know what they're. I'll doing tell you what you don't season. want to be. You don't want to be a gay dog in Iraq. No, you they'll cut your don't. goddamn head off yeah. out there because they don't care about dogs in the first place. But they do want their dogs to fuck their women. Uh, no, that's mostly just Fort Bragg where that happens. You also oh, don't want to be a dog anywhere there's monkeys because they just eat you off the fucking ceiling. Yeah, I wonder how, if that's a global Hatfield-McCoy situation or if it's only in certain parts of the world. Mm, are they jealous because they're question. our best friend? Now, there's a, where, We'd have to release some monkeys where, over here to find uh, out. Bob, where was it? Kuala Lumpur or someplace like that? where It was some city. It was somewhere in India. Uh, I don't remember where exactly, but there was a, basically a gang war between dogs and monkeys. Yeah, the monkeys were grabbing... Yep. They were stealing the puppies from the dog packs and taking them up to the roof and throwing, throwing them, them off, off the goddamn yeah. roof. Yeah. Smart. They're, they're smart, ruthless. dude. On these streets? Maybe those dogs yeah. were communists, too. And if, if that's the case, then, I mean, look, I love dogs and all, but commie's got to go. Yeah. So. Or maybe the dogs were gay over there in the Middle East. Uh, yeah. Speaking of commie, the dog commie is now gone as well. They had to get rid of that one, too. Which one? Uh, uh, Commander? Yeah. Oh, uh, Biden's dog. Yeah, he, he that he, that dog was biting a bunch of people, too. Yeah, what the fuck's the deal? Can't we just send uh, Mike Ritlin up there to train the, the goddamn dog? Uh, I don't think Mike Ritlin would be of much help. <laughs> He, well, he would train the dog to fucking bite everybody, probably. Yeah. <laughs> why wouldn't you? Uh, why do they keep keep getting these goddamn things if they're just chewing through people? I don't know. I you don't know? know. Maybe, I, look, maybe that's part of the game. It's like... Uh, you ever got bitten by a dog? Um, it's not fun. Little bites. Yeah, I mean, no, no, uh, no dog's ever tried to attack me or anything. Because if one, it did, I would kill that fucking dog. Yeah, really I, dude, I had one uh, neighbor's <clears> dog take a fucking bite out of my uh right by my ass mm. like where the cheek hits the leg right there and god damn it it hurt and the first thing i thought of was like i i want to hurts like hell don't yes i want to kill this, dog. Yes, yeah, kill there, this fucking dog someone's Did- dog who got me in the stomach and the arm a few times ripped my shirt open whose was that i want to talk about it an ex or somebody here no somebody here dan's old dog oh what did he get a rescue I, I guarantee it was a fucking rescue wasn't it you son of a bitch no, we had a party over there one night and i almost got attacked i had to jump on the table by dan by his dog? No. Oh, no. you're yours. My old one, yeah. No shit. No. The little one? No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. I didn't. I don't. I, I never saw that dog. No. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, that dog. Nor should you have, because it attacks everyone. Who's it was doesn't? It? it doesn't attack everyone. It only attacks you. And now, now is it dead? Or is it still alive? No, it's fine. Where does it live? Missouri. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. But it's that dog's fine. It's just Giorgio has sus energy. You think so? I know so. It didn't attack fucking Joel. <laughs> 
This is very true. Joel just walks up and pets it, and then like I walk in immediately and it just turns his head. But Joel's a slow up. bear, dude. Like dogs don't attack bears, so that makes sense to me. You know, <clears throat> it makes sense. And he never tried to pull any bullshit with me, but I'm no, I'm a, a, a you know, real I'm, American. I, I'm in command. I am mm-hmm. the commander. <laughs> Uh, speaking of command, you can be ca- in command of your uh, body and your face this summer season. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to unleash the beast within you. This summer, Manscaped is here to help you level up your beach game with the new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. They're going to go past waist deep in the grooming game and dive headfirst into your facial hair fantasies. The Beard Hedger is a game changer, allowing you to shape your beard like a true beach babe. So this summer... Let the beach balls bounce and turn heads all over the place. Visit manscaped.com. Use the promo code DRINKINGBROS for 20% off plus free shipping. It's time to tame your mane. Now, when you order this Beard Hedger Pro Kit, first of all, it's going to come with one guard, all right? Uh, It'll be 20 hair-cutting lengths, but just one fucking guard. So you can throw out the, the drawer full of guards on all your other beard trimmers and all that other bullshit You don't need it here, which is great. Also in this kit, you're going to get a beard shampoo, conditioner, beard oil, and beard balm there. And uh, and then it's going to come with three free gifts. A beard brush, a comb, and scissors to ensure your beard is ready to impress. So get 20% off and free shipping with the promo code DRINKINGBROS at manscaped.com. That is 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code Drinking Bros. Manscaped Beard Hedger. One stroke, one guard, twenty lengths. Big fan of that. I like the uh, the balm they're making now. It's good. It's the balm, dude. I wasn't gonna say that. Okay, but I was, and I did. Next up, Maui is on fire. I don't really Mahalo, Bob. Yeah, this story sucks, man, because it's uh, you know, it's a place that still has a lot of its own ancient shit, which Mm -hmm. is cool, you know, these days. But I don't understand how this could have happened. I'm not sure. I know we're in the middle of the summer, but doesn't that place stay pretty wet most of the time? Yeah, Yeah. pull up up the pics here, Bob. So a wildfire tore through the heart of the Hawaiian island of Maui in total darkness Wednesday, reducing much of a historic town to ash and forcing people to physically jump into the ocean to flee the flames. Uh, at At least six people already have died. Dozens have been wounded. Uh, The acting governor there, Sylvia Luke, said the flames wiped out entire communities and urged travelers to stay away. This is not a safe place to be, she said. Uh, The uh, wind-driven conflagration? That's right. I've never heard that word before. Here's some footage. Swept through there. Yeah, let's see this. Oh, shit. I mean, it looks like... It looks uh, like fucking Pompeii. It looks like Iraq after Gulf War One, where we, you know, dumped all those fucking tanks and shit. God damn, dude. I, I don't understand how this could have happened. I don't either. I Unless it was a just a cigarette freak out of accident. No, is that true? No. Oh. Uh, man, dude, Please that's why High wild. winds... And I get that. So I guess if there was no rain, high winds, and like a freak thing, maybe. And like a power line went down? Yeah. It's not a dry. I mean, the island is far from dry. I know, like, dude. It's lush. I know. It's fucking. I'm trying to think of a reason. It just, it, none of this makes sense. And the story just kind of popped up out of nowhere. Uh, and it's so bizarre that you're like, all right, well, how bad can it be? And until you show this footage, I have not seen it before. So shit, dude. I mean, this is a whole ass town. Like, this is like damn. fucking Bakhmut. Like, I know. it's fucking crazy. Wow, dude. That is fucked. Uh, that sucks. Maui's beautiful. Was that the island you were on, Bob? I have not been to Maui. I've been to uh, Kauai mm-hmm. and uh, Oahu. Yeah. Proper pronunciation, and I appreciate that. Island Bob is back. Yeah. Mahalo, brothers and sisters. Mahalo, dude. Uh, strange one, man. Um, so one of the residents said it was apocalyptic uh, from what they explained, and uh, the heat, the smoke, the flames, and they had to get their elderly uncle out of a house. Uh, all of this is yeah. Is the bad. elderly are extremely flammable. They are, and they they don't tell you that. Well, they're drier. It's like you oh, know yeah. wood <laughs> left on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Everybody knows it. Think about it. What's more likely to go up in flames? A dry old woman or a moist, just you know, nineteen year old prime of her life? Yeah, that's gonna be wet. Why was it a wet. Why was it a, a prime of her life? Well, Bob's not going to say that about a, a moist 19-year-old boy, I think. Right? I think Bob has said that. 
I put I a moist nineteen year old boy is in the prime of his life. Yeah, uh, all yeah. nineteen and moist nineteen and is not the prime of your life. If if <laughs> if you get to to old age and you look back and you're like, you know what was great was nineteen, then your life fucking sucked. Uh, not bro. not like in a sort of like achievement or or mentally healthy way, <laughs> but in terms of just like physically, like you just feel great. Yeah, you can, I love you got nineteen. The whole world fucking yep. in front of you. I love nineteen. I, I wouldn't want to go back to be nineteen. I'd go back like. 27. I've had to pick an age to mm. perma live at, like 26, 27. But, uh, That's a great question, actually. I think 22 for me. Which is why I think that Blood Boy dude is so weird. Like 18? That's too much. 18? No, I don't want to be 18 again. Like, I didn't know yeah. enough shit at 18. Well, also, you didn't even look your best at 18. <clears throat> no. You look your best in your mid 20s and mid 30s, really. Like, I mean, unless you're like Paul Rudd or some shit. Right. Now, we say that now because we're in our mid 30s. I think. No, it's, to- it's totally true. You don't know what you're taking at that age and all that other shit. Like, I remember dosing up creatine for the first time. Of you know? course you did. And you're bloated. It's too much water. And you're like, all right, I wish I would have used some cleaner, better shit. Um, now, the Andro they were pumping out back then was fucking awesome. Just imagine but if you had the brain now I know, in your body. I know. Well, and you knew, but you knew like what supplements to take and all that other shit. I feel like 22, you had it kind of figured out and dialed in a little bit. And you were in the kind of the last year of college. That's the age for me. What, what about you? If you go back to one age and perma live, what is it? Um, now, really? Guess, yeah. Like you're happy with everything and and all that shit. Yeah. Why not? You like getting on a Peloton and everything. What do you mean? What, what, are, you, what are you saying? What are you saying, Ross? I like it. The, be- the I like age. it. I like it better than running in the sand like I did in the fucking army, yeah. yeah okay, boots. so what, here's what I'm saying, Giorgio. The uh, the things you have to do to maintain your age now and try to just keep up with the rest of the fucking world suck and they're boring and everything else, live, dude. Brother, At 22, you you're ripping you off PRs and everything else, Not dude. Not really. You just gotta live. Like, th- early 30s is the best. Early 30s is fine. That's all great. But for me, the favorite era... Uh, was college and all that other shit because of, of what I didn't have to worry about anymore. Yeah, that's I why I said that. I so that's that's college. more of a mental thing, too. Like, I started to worry about shit in my late 20s, early 30s, where I was like, man, I don't want to be thinking about this bullshit every day. It's also we're going to kind of stop taking mushrooms because there's just too much thinking going on in my mind, and I don't want that either. At 22, I didn't think about anything. It was like, great, what the fuck? What is this? Let's go. I don't care. I don't care. I have no responsibilities, no wife, no kids, no nothing. Let's Fuck. Let's party. Yeah, but you're like, you're never going to be happy with no responsibility. No, no human being is happy with no responsibility. That's not how human beings work. Well, the responsibility at the time was just going to class, right? So that at least there was something there. No, I mean like some some guiding purpose in your life. If you you are rudderless without it. No, I I understand that. But so at 22 years old, if you were able to stay 22 forever, which means you would progress through your life that way. Um, you'd be fucked. You would kill yourself. I don't think so, dude. Oh yeah. What's you, your? You, you become crazy. Like this fucking dude, this blood boy guy. He's fucking nuts. He's out of his mind. <laughs> he is. Georgia, what's your age? What's your perma age? <sighs> See, you said I ruined. I ruined my mid twenties. Seven. It's <laughs> watching cartoons on Saturday. Dan, don't tempt me. Can't fucking. Maybe six months ago. If you said I that, six, I would say six months ago, Ross. Really? How old are you? 33. Okay. So we're the same age. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm in better shape now than I was when I was 27. <laughs> um, a little bit happier, a little bit wiser. Even a as a D1 patient. wrestler, you, you're like you're my happy life. with the shape you're in now versus college? I mean, my life was miserable then. Oh. Like, that's unexplainable peril and depression and weight cut. Pain. Yeah. Like, yeah, every moment of my life was misery. De- Delco, where are you at, perma age? Right now. No, that's not true. You're a liar. Why is that not true? You blew out your leg in a softball game on a double. I don't enjoy running, so right now. I'll answer for Dan. He wants to perpetually live in that first golf bet he won that day. If he get Groundhog's Day that day. No, there, it's like uh, earlier in the year. No. Uh, the, first, the first first one. I think no, no, that was years ago. Then. Oh, 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 gotcha, gotcha, years gotcha. Ago. Pepper's Farm. Remember? There's an old Italian joke about how um, hell is a place where you win every bet and all the bartenders are Irish. I don't, I don't think winning every bet would be... Like it wouldn't you, be yeah. the same, yeah. Yeah. Especially for a miser like him. Yeah, but I, I think with him, though, if it was like all double overtime games and he had to really grunt it and sweat it out, 
I think he'd be okay with that if he just kept winning. How many wins in a row, though, do you know that you're going to win? I don't think you do. That. When you when you go into overtime and shit, no, I bet no, on no. a I, full disclosure. I, I I bet on a weird soccer game the other night between uh, it was <laughs> this is dark women's uh, World Cup, but it was England versus Jamaica. And I put money on that, and it went to like off the full 120 okay. overtime and everything else, and then penalty kicks. I have a real life story. Go ahead. No, but this is re- this is real. So right, England right. won in a sure. shootout, but like, but like money, like my actual whole life was riding on this game. Uh, <laughs> so after I got fired from TFM the first time, I went to Vegas, took my entire severance, and put it all on uh, this BYU Mississippi State game, which was eight. Uh, it went into minus eight. It was uh, yeah. Okay. So it was the spread was eight, and I was on plus eight. And uh, it went into double overtime, Oof. and uh, the only way they, I could potentially even push or win or do anything was, or I couldn't win, right? Or because uh, I, I touchdown, was... two point conversion, and then the other side doesn't score, right? Exactly. Okay. So and that's exactly what happened. I pushed, and it was the greatest push of my life. Wow, that's dark. All right, Dan, Just you're right. Up, that's the boulder rolling down the hill, and then him starting again the next morning. Yeah, that's uh, so. I think D'Anthony's right here. I yeah, he's got to live in misery. He's got to live in misery. Yeah, we define ourselves by our struggle. All of us, we do. People that are like think about Anthony Bourdain or Kate Spade or somebody like that, mm-hmm. who has everything a human being could ever want. Like, if you took any human being from any time in human history and said, you're going to get all the stuff that Kate Spade has right now, regardless of any of the social issues she might have or any of the relationship issues Bourdain may have had, every single human being would have said yes to that deal. Literally every one of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're you're right. (laughs) Um, But it's one of those things where nobody talks about the struggles because it's just depressing and it's not fun to hear about. By definition. Yeah. I mean, literally, you're just like, hey, dude, I don't want to fucking hear it. Just Yeah, you don't want to hear it because everybody's got struggles. Just yeah. shut the fuck up. And, like, we, we used I to know. respect people because of how they... Uh, Kept uh, it way down deep inside. Yeah, just until it became a tumor. Mm-hmm. And then you died. Far less tumors these days. <laughs> and then you died and that was it. Maybe go back to seven, who knows? Shit. Uh, next up, is Wayne Brady going to have to fuck a dude? Son of a bitch, dude. Wayne Brady, known for hosting... The popular TV show Let's Make a Deal has announced that he is pansexual. Oh, God. Uh, just play this video, Bob. I don't, why is any of this necessary? I think this is the video, but I'm not sure. It, it is. Uh, well, it is, yeah. Uh, yeah, you mute that because we'll get dinged on YouTube, obviously. But uh, you can show the video here. He's got... Babies, 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 and then uh, there's a bunch of weird dancers there. There's the uh, rainbow flag, which is fun. Got some rainbow lights in the background there. Wayne Brady is now in a wig. He's kind of wigged up there. Uh, He's got confetti in his face, and he's announcing to the world that he is pansexual. We'll go to our uh, sexual orientation uh, expert, Giorgio, here. What the fuck does pansexual mean? First of all, why am I the expert? You I mean, know, I know all this shit. You always know all this shit. Okay, first of all, pansexual means you love sex with anything. Yeah, you just fuck anything. Well, so inanimate, too, no, like no, no, objects. No, any human, no. No matter how they identify. Because Donald Glover in the one Star Wars movie was pansexual and he fucked a robot. Did he? Did he announce, "Hey, I'm pansexual," and then fuck the robot? I, I'm being, I'm being, I'm being honest here. Do you that, do that, that when you when you have sex with Jesse? Do you walk into the room like I am heterosexual? <laughs> then you have sex with her? No, because I, I, I do. If I saw, time. but here's the thing: if I saw a man fucking a robot without a description before it, I would think that it's a kink. I wouldn't guess that he's just pansexual, and then he just decided to fuck. Well, pansexual is not a real thing. I, I, I know that, months. which yeah. is why I don't understand any of this bullshit and why this term even exists. Th- this is like, here's what he said. I advocate mental health for all, and a part of that is self-transparency. Self-transparency is a meaningless phrase. That doesn't mean shit. No. Um, anyways, in doing my work, I've come to see a few truths, one of them being that I want to be free to love whomever I want. This truth makes me pan and thus part of the LGBTQ family. So he's just trying to fucking angle his way into victimhood. That's, that's what all it that's felt all like this to me. Is. It's all it is. He said it was scary, blah, blah, blah. This shouldn't shake anyone's world, but if it bothers you at all, that's your business. 
Um, I was so afraid of having my manhood questioned, but screw that. A real man in my eyes isn't afraid to be honest and happy from now on. I'll be over here living my best life. Not one person on earth gave a fuck about Wayne Brady's dick. No, Not or one. where it was going. No. I didn't, never needed to know it in my entire <laughs> life. And uh, I think I chatted with this with, with Jesse earlier, but um, when I saw this announcement, because I didn't see this on, uh, on social media, I saw it on Entertainment Tonight. When I saw this announcement, all I could think of was, holy shit, people are this bored because they're on strike that they have no way to, to, to get attention anymore. Mm -hmm. So you've got to come out with a thing that nobody even cares that you are anyways. It's not like I would ever walk up to, to Wayne Brady and be like, hey, man, you're straight, gay, or pan. Yeah. Uh, never in a million years would I do that or care. Well, there's another twist to this. So he says, <laughs> he says uh, that pan means being able to be attracted to anyone who identifies as gay, straight, bi, transsexual, or non-binary. Um, mm -hmm. That that's part of it. Then he said his, his self-discovery journey began after Robin Williams' death in 2014 where he became a vocal uh, advocate about for, for mental health. Mental health, but not being yeah. a pansexual. Well, he said, not just the buzzword of mental health, but really what I what I what what do I have to do to function in this big world and still be okay with yourself, and more importantly, to love yourself uh, so that you don't hurt yourself. I don't know, just go to fucking work, asshole. Yeah. Like people have been doing for two million fucking years. God damn it. But it is a very strange character arc. Um you talk about the fucking butterfly effect. Robin Williams kills himself, and now I'm fucking trannies. Yeah, you know what dude, I mean? I, That's a I, weird A, C, and I don't understand B, to be frank. It, it's it, th This is just typical, pathetic Hollywood me attention. Give me attention. Look at how special I am. No matter how successful so I get, I can still find a way to make myself a marginalized minority somehow. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, and that's why I was asking if he had kids or something where, you know, like Dwayne Wade sits, right? They're making the kid, mm -hmm. the kids trans or whatever the fuck they're doing there. Um, you know, and the parents will come out and say, oh, we support this because they've got a younger kid or something. I was like, is he doing it for a kid? But I think, Bob, you said, what, his oldest is like 20 or his, his only kid is 20 years old or something? Wayne Brady has a 20-year-old daughter. Yeah, so what the, who fucking cares about any of this shit? Uh, and also, no one is asking where you put your dick. Now, in the case of Robin Williams... Um, well, he's one of my favorites of all time, anybody who's in comedy. Robin Williams is one of the greatest of all time. I met him one time. That was the most depressed person I've ever met in my entire life. And it had nothing to do with his sexuality whatsoever. So, yes, back to your point. Trying to pair the two of them up in this weird conversation, that doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Like, yeah. I, I don't get it. Unless Wayne Brady, who knows? Maybe he's super depressed in real life. I I have never heard it, but hey, who knows? It would be really weird to be uh, someone in Hollywood in 2023 and be depressed that you can't be openly gay. Yeah. That is a ridiculous thing to say, frankly. It's like, uh, uh, I, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come out someday gay as fuck. Be like, you know what really turned it around was 9-11. <laughs> Seeing those two towers come down, all I could think about was cocks after that. Two dicks just crashing shut, against my face. Please just shut up for fucking ever. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Hollywood's the most accepting place for the entire gay community. I don't know what you're worried about there, Wayne. Oh, fuck, dude. I, I, the rest of it's going to tumble. If these strikes keep going on, we're going to see more of this bullshit. Oh, it's going to get really pathetic. Because the other part is, like, the the Entertainment Tonight, so the, the insiders and all that shit of the world, they have nothing to report on either. So this was, like, front and center, where it was wow. like, oh, thank God we got something to talk about tonight. Wayne Brady's pan. Fuck, dude, unless he's in a kitchen, I just keep the pan shit to yourself. I don't fucking care. Nobody put, cares where you put your dick. It's like a, it's a super one-upper move. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, oh, my son uh, just graduated from uh, from fucking uh, Penn State. It's like, oh, my, my kid went to University of Pennsylvania. Like, oh, thanks, dude. <laughs> Sorry that we didn't fucking go to Ivy League schools, you piece of shit. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're gay, you're bi, you're trans. Oh, I fucking do it all, brother. Yeah. I'm a fucking jaguar. Just shut the fuck up, Wayne Brady. <laughs> God damn. I wish he would follow Robin Williams. Wow, I knew it was going there. I was just waiting. Okay. I, yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know at what period in the in the article we would really get to. to there, that. there are there are people out there who the actually struggle 
mm -hmm. in life. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And this guy is trying to co-opt the, the social empathy for those people just to get attention for himself. There is not a worse person on earth than Wayne Brady. <laughs> well... I can think of a few, but I can't think of one. The weird, the weirder thing too is that why it, he's, it says he's fifty-one years old. Why at fifty-one is this your your grand? Because he's fucking bored. World? Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, one of our listeners sent in something that uh, Bruce Jenner didn't get his dong lopped off. By the way, oh no, he's going to come back as Bruce. Well, I think uh, the article they sent me, and I don't know, you can fact check it. I don't know if it's real, but they said uh, he thought he had testicular cancer, and I was like, well. You can't have that if you lop that old ding dong. Well, off, maybe he so. cut the balls off and kept the or cut, cut the dick off and kept the balls. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just like a fucking axe wound with a couple of nuts hanging. Oh <laughs> man, could you imagine? I can. I actually think about it all the time. <laughs> could that be the vagina and then you have balls underneath it? Ugh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, it's just why not? Picturing balls slapping balls, dude, down there. Well, I mean, it happens more than you'd like to think. It does, but usually <clears throat> there's a ding-dong on top of it. You if know? I had uh, a pussy and balls, I would try to stuff my balls inside myself. Of course. A hundred, like every day. Yeah, that, that's just like, you know how you fiddle with things, fidget with things, yeah. you tap, whatever the fuck. That, that would be my fit, go-to fidget. Yeah. Instead of like chewing my lip, I would be trying to stuff my nuts inside my own pussy hole. No, I understand. I understand for sure. Uh, last but not least this week, we got a bear on a fucking plane. A bear being transported on a <laughs> Iraqi Airways flight from Baghdad to Dubai Friday caused delays after it escaped from a crate in the cargo hold. Uh, Iraqi Airways issued an apology after a video circulated online of a male passenger saying the return flight to Baghdad was delayed for over an hour due to a bear in the cargo. Forgive me. I've not spent a lot of time in Baghdad. I was unaware that there were even bears in Baghdad. Um, I mean, I'm sure rich people own a lot of weird animals in the Middle East, lions and bears and shit. Just to do it? Yeah. You know, like Mike Tyson or something? <laughs> there yeah, are bears native to parts of the Middle East. Really? The Syrian brown bear uh, is one of them. No, that's actually a professional wrestler. That's not a, <laughs> that's not a species. Do you have video of this? What is that video, Bob? Uh, is this the bear on the plane? Oh, oh shit. Oh, he's a nice guy. Look at him. Look, he's a friendly bear. That guy's scratching his head. It's I a really, baby bear. I, I wish we would go... We should spend the, the next, like, 100 years trying to domesticate bears. They're cute. They're, they're really cute, and they're really smart. If you there's could no, shrink there's them no, down... There's no reason for us to be antagonistic towards bears. We've solved this problem with dogs for the most part. Right. I feel like we could do it with bears as well. But I want a miniature one. Oh, yeah. I, I like the mini ones yeah. better. Like, let's shrink them down... Figure that whole process out scientifically, and then I'll, I'd have a mini bear run around my house. So all the day. bear, the bear, and then a cub as well were being transported from Baghdad to Dubai, and uh, they had to sedate it when it got to Dubai because the bear got loose or some shit. I don't know. Um, Are they, the bear still alive? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. They issued an apology. Um, <clears throat> the airline did not reveal why the bear was being transported. Uh, to the UAE or provide any information on its well-being after it being sedated. I'm sure, but I mean, who knows? In the Middle East, they may have just cut his head off. Um, but I can Yay! solve. I can solve that right now. Some rich dude in Dubai just wanted a bear. Easily, that's all that is. I, look, I understand the the, the Dubai angle because yes, yeah. a, a rich guy's going to want a bear in his his yeah. hotel or whatever the fuck it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the Baghdad one is is the tricky one to me because I, I just didn't think that bear is located there. You'd have to um, ship in the bears to Baghdad from somewhere else. Yeah, they probably got it from Russia, mm. I'm sure. In a trade, yeah, like an yeah. arms deal? Uh, no, I mean, we probably just bought it. Be sexy. Ru it Russians, Russians do domesticate bears. Yeah, I know. So, um, but, you know, uh, the, the airline said two small endangered bears were shipped from Baghdad, uh, and when the flight arrived in Dubai, one of the bears broke his cage, forcing health and environment authorities at Dubai airports to sedate it. Now, who would have thought that flying on Iraqi airways would have been a problem? You know yeah, I mean? right. Never would have seen that one coming, guys. Me neither. Um, Everybody talks also, about their first-class service. Also, do have I been on a commercial flight internationally or, or domestically where there's a goddamn bear in the cargo hold? Because I would like to fucking know. Yeah. I feel like you, you can't – if somebody calls the airline and says they have a peanut allergy, they will remove – any kind of nut at all from that airplane to make sure that it's, I can't even bring my own on board and eat them. But you can put a bear in the fucking cargo hold and not tell anybody about it. Fuck that. Yeah, it'd be wild. Fuck that. It? I think at minimum, 
you should have Steven Seagal on board to fight that bear if it comes to it. Or there, there's got to be one of those Southwest Airlines uh, stewardesses who give those, those really funny speeches, say, hey, guys, there's a bear on board, so keep your snacks to yourself. That should be at least at a minimum what should happen when you board the flight. Then you can make your own decision on whether when you, you want to stay on the goddamn thing mm-hmm. or not, you know, and go to Fresno. Do you want to finish the flight and go to I Fresno? I think the bear should have to buy two seats, too. Same here. Just no fat shaming, but. But in this video, for the audio listeners, this, the bear was in the overhead. Or my, correct me if I'm wrong, Bob. That looked like the overhead. No, no, no. That, no, that no. was outside the plane. Yeah. That was, uh, it, it was, was the a, cargo? Yeah. Okay. Shit. Because it looked like a fun little baby bear that you could stuff in the overhead. And that, that, that I wouldn't mind, you know. Get it a, a fruit and cheese plate and just kind of chuck it up there. See what happens. Uh, before we get to the Drinking Bro of the Week here, why don't you tell everybody about DB Merch. Uh, new merch, merch store is live uh, via Nine Line, correct? Yeah, that's right. Drinkingbros.com will take you there. Um, we've got plenty of stuff there. Uh, if you have any questions about any anything, uh, just hit us up on social media for now until we get all these kinks worked out. But, yeah, there's, there's standard gear available. We're going to start adding more hats, cups, mugs. Um, Bro Box, if you're wondering, will be out in a couple of days uh, to you. A couple shirts, some other stuff in there as well. Okay. Uh, and also, uh, you may have noticed that you didn't get charged for your last month's Bro Box. You're welcome for that. We, that was a technical error as well, but... You know, what are you going to do? Cheers. Yeah, yeah, it's our mistake. Take advantage <clears throat> of us. We always say it about ghost bed. Take advantage of us, too. All right? We're losing money. Who cares? Uh, but thank you for listening, uh, and thank you for all your support over there. Now is uh, it's the time. Drinking bro of the week. Who do we got here? We got uh, Smitty from Georgia. I like that. When you just go by your nickname. Yeah. Smitty from Georgia. Uh, listener of Drinking Bros for five years, nominating Christian Hescock. Reason for the nomination, Christian Crank Hescock was one of the best pilots I've ever had the opportunity to work with. He was prior enlisted, enjoyed hanging out with us, enlisted motherfuckers, and gave us the best advice. He tragically lost his life in a training mishap in Guam in 2007. The air crew on board uh, nearly killed themselves trying to rescue him. I received the call while deployed on the USS Enterprise, and it changed my life. This dude was truly fucking epic. Uh, one day I will be in y'all's studio to tell you some sea stories from our short time together. His famous saying when someone went to the captain's mass was, start the porn music, someone's getting fucked. That's great. Uh, as uh, Memorial Day is approaching, this was a little later here, just wanted to give a shout out to uh, this fucking legend. I hope some of my Guam friends are listening to this. Because this man touched so many lives and not in a gay way. Love the podcast, uh, all of them on the network, and uh, love uh, Hard AF Seltzer. That is our favorites. Please get that shit to Kennesaw, Georgia. Shells, look at that. When it's an old me email like that, we didn't know, and it popped up. We are in Kennesaw. Brother, check the store locator, hardafseltzer.com. And uh, you'll see we're all over Kennesaw now. We're all over Georgia now. Uh, shit, we're probably in 100 locations now in Georgia already. And uh, more to come. We just had a meeting with a massive uh, grocery store chain down there. I think you know what it is. It starts with a K. And uh, hopefully we'll be in there in, uh, come spring, you know. You do these fancy pitch meetings and all that stuff, and we'll see how it all shakes out. But we're all over Georgia. Proud to be there. Love it. Uh, we're also in Alabama, which will be there in, uh, shit, th- four weeks. Four weeks from today, that game is. Looking forward to, to seeing your smiling faces there. And then, obviously, we'll see you in Orlando on uh, August 31st, Miami on September 1st, and then back in Orlando September 3rd at all the, the football games and all the live shows and all the fun. Thanks for tuning in, kids. Go to iTunes, rate the show a five-star Leave a quick review. Also, head on over to Spotify. It's just a five-star, and you can walk away. For D'Anthony and Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is Drinking Bros Fake News. Good night, everyone.